Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's so wonderful to see so many of you here, or to at least know that you're here. Uh, my name is Alejandra Moran. I'm an assistant director of admission at Williams, and I actually graduated from Williams myself in 2017. I was a biology and psychology double major. I was also a pre-med student, so I completed all the pre-medical requirements and will be heading to medical school very soon. Um, but today I'm joined by two wonderful uh, current students. Um, so I want to give them a moment to introduce themselves before we get started. Um, Deja, do you want to kick us off? Uh, yeah, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Deja Green um, and I'm a junior here at Williams. Well, not here, but generally. Um, and I'm from Boca Raton, Florida, but I'm currently in Denver, Colorado, which is actually where I was born. Um, and at Williams, I'm a women's gender and sexuality studies major, and I have a concentration in Africana studies. Um, when I'm not playing sports, I'm on the varsity softball team. Um, I'm also involved in the Black Student Union and the spoken word group Speak Free. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Nick. I'm currently a sophomore. Uh, I'm from New York City, so I'm in New York City right now with my family. Um, I guess a little bit about me on campus. I'm involved in, I'm on the Ultimate Frisbee team, which is a club sports team. Um, I take private piano lessons, um, which are uh, actually free. It's super awesome. The school offers like free music lessons, which is super fun. Um, and then I also am involved in like a couple of different um, sort of teaching and mentor mentoring activities, uh, both within the Williams community and outside of it. Um, and so, for example, or one of the things I do, for example, is like a um, volunteer book club at the Berkshire County Prison, which has been tons of fun. So that's a bit about me. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Um, and just to go over some housekeeping details before we get started in answering questions, um, as you might have noticed, uh, your video and audio have been automatically deactivated. Um, that's just to make sure that the session runs smoothly um, but even though we can't see your beautiful faces, um, just know that you can engage with us and ask us questions throughout the session. Um, that is the entire point of the session. We had one for virtual previews on April 13th, um, and we still had some students that had a lot of questions, so we want to make sure um, to give you an opportunity to get those answered right now. And we have uh, really wonderful resources right here for you. Um, and so you can actually ask us questions using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, those questions will go directly to us and they will come privately so nobody will know you asked the question and um, we'll answer them live and we'll start with the questions that have already been asked and we'll just keep on going for the next hour. Um, we certainly hope we won't run into any technical difficulties, um, but if that is the case, thank you so much in advance for bearing with us. Right now it's a little windy in Williamstown, so I'm hoping that my Wi-Fi continues to work properly. Um, but again, thank you so much for joining us. And we are going to get started with um, asking the questions that are actually have already been asked, but keep them coming. Um, so the first question is actually, what is your favorite thing to do in Williamstown? Um, and I know that both of you, Nick and Deja, you know, you've done a lot of really different activities. Um, so do you want to start us off with what's your favorite thing? And Nick, you can uh, kick us off. Um. Thank you guys also, by the way, for listening. I hope this is um, fun and informative. Um, oh, favorite thing to do in Williamstown. I, I think definitely one of my favorite things to do is um, to go hiking and just go for walks around in like the um, local Berkshire area. Um, I discovered this sort of spot super close to campus last year um, called the Green River, which is like a five minute walk from campus. Um, and it's like, it's just, it's a very small little river you with like a little beach on the side. Um, and so I really love, um, especially in the summer, not maybe not so much in the winter because it's, it's cold, um, but going down to the river and sort of like getting to hang out there with friends and just spending an afternoon. Um, and there are also tons of really nice hiking trails. Um, so definitely that's something I really enjoy doing in like the Williamstown area. <clears throat> Um, one of my favorite things to do on campus, which I was actually just reminiscing about yesterday, um, is going to our local coffee shop, Tunnel City Coffee, which is at the end of Spring Street. It sort of cuts through Williams campus and is technically like off campus, but it's not. Um, and I spend almost all of my time there, honestly. Um, all the employees know me on a first name basis. Sometimes they give me like a free cookie during midterms and they're just like, you can get, like, you can get through it, you can do it, Deisha. Um, so I think I spend a lot of time there doing work, having meetings with professors. Um, I'm kind of artsy, so sometimes I like scrapbook there or color and like there's like these really big windows that I like to look out. 
of. So I think definitely Tunnel City Coffee. Great. And um, I know actually a couple of people have already asked if this session will be recorded. And yes, this session will be recorded. It will be posted on our website um, shortly after we complete the session. Um, so if you have to leave early, um, that's totally fine. You can take a look at it uh, again later on, or if you missed an answer, um, that will be recorded. So feel free to leave whenever you want. Um, thanks again for joining us. Um, and then another question that kind of goes along with your typical favorite things to do um, in Williamstown. What does a typical day weekend look like for you both? Um, just think about it for a little bit. And then Deja, if you want to get us started with that one. Yeah, totally. Um, so I could probably tell you like what like a Friday looks like because it's kind of a, a mix of the two. Um, so usually I sleep in really late. I don't usually have any early classes because that's not really my style. And thankfully I can sort of adjust my schedule um, to work around that. So I usually will wake up. I usually have about like two classes on Friday. I'll go to class usually from like 9.55 to 11.10 and then probably like another one from like 11.20 to 12.35. Um, after I'll probably get some lunch. I'll usually go to Peresky, which is like the main like hub of campus um, that has like a large dining hall there. So I usually go there. And also usually I expect some packages on Friday. So I'll like check the mail room. Maybe I'll get like some new like cool makeup or like some cool accessories or something. And then usually I go back to my dorm, hang out with people I live with for a while. We tend to like do a lot of work. Um, quite honestly, like the, there'll probably be some questions later about like the social scene, but um, most of my life revolves around getting my work done on time, honestly, and doing readings and papers and projects. Um, and so, but if I tend to do go out um, at night, I usually uh, will just like have like a small team function um, with my softball team. And because I'm also getting old, um, usually I will just like go to the small team function and then we'll go to like our late night snack bar. Um, Lee's is my favorite, which is like breakfast food. And I'll probably just like get like an egg and bagel or like an omelet or something and then call it a night and start the whole thing over the next day. Yeah, and then Nick, whenever you give your answer to that, we actually had that question about social life on campus. So tell us what your typical day looks like and maybe what you do um, for the social life. Um, sure, I was, so I guess just, so today is, um, today's what, Wednesday? Today's Wednesday, <laughs> I'm really losing track of time. Um, so on a typical Wednesday, I guess, just to contrast with a little with Fridays, um, I typically have work at the library in the mornings at from eight to 10. Uh, so I'll wake up, have a little bit of breakfast, um, work at the libraries. Also, this is just sort of a side, but I remember when I was going to college, I was um, sort of definitely worried at first about how I was going to fill my day and that, you know, since classes only take up a certain amount of time, but I found that since coming to college, there have been lots of different really great ways to fill my time. Um, anyway, so Wednesdays, I work at the library, then I usually will, get like a second breakfast from Peresky. Um, and usually I work in the library um, for an hour or two until my next class, uh, uh, which is a creative writing class, which I have from, uh, I think it's from one until uh, 3.50 or so, but usually we take plenty of breaks in between. Um, and then after that, I will uh, usually go back to my dorm, get changed, go to Frisbee practice. Um, and then after that, I'll have dinner with the team. Um, and then usually in the evening, I spend some time um, doing work in the library or um, hanging out with friends back in my dorm and sometime practicing piano. Um, so usually that's what a typical day looks like for me. Um, as to social scene, I think uh, one thing I do is definitely spend a lot of time uh, hang out with my friends during meals. Um, and I think snack bar, um, like Deisha mentioned, is like a great way to do this. Um, I think I'm forgetting the hours, but I think it's open from like nine until 12 or nine until 1 a.m. Um, and so um, almost any time you go into like Lee's or Whitman's, which is the other snack, snack bar place and 82 Grill, which is another one. Um, there are tons of people there, like, you know, getting food, hanging out, um, socializing. And it's a really great, great way to just like spend time with friends um, and catch up after like, you know, a busy day. 
And I will say, having graduated from Williams, um, that was something that I absolutely loved as a student was actually the snack bar options um, and how it was just a time where you could just go and hang out with your friends and do homework over some really bad food for you. But college food <laughs> is, is what is essentially for you. Um, some of my favorite meals were like the nachos or the fried green beans um, or even the gelato. Um, and it was just a nice time to decompress from doing work. Um, and I don't think I realized how much I missed it until after I graduated and I could hear people talking about snack bar. So I can definitely say that that's something I miss from um, having graduated. Um, so thank you so much for letting us know about that. Um, and then another question um, that we had actually, this is for Nick, uh, a little more specific, um, but if you could elaborate a little bit more on your work with the local prison um, and, also, if you want to talk about um, maybe how easy it was to get involved with that organization or with clubs, um, we'd love to hear about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the, the, the reason that I'm in sort of like this uh, book club, which is at the local prison, is actually like a total coincidence. I think at some point in freshman year, I was in Pereski and um, one of my friends told me they were going to a meeting upstairs um, and it, the meeting turned out to be for... Um, this group, I think it's I'm pretty sure it's called P3. It's like a sort of like larger thing. Um, but it's uh, basically the, the goal of it is to um, uh, connect students to the criminal justice system and have them learn more about it. Um, and um, so, I mean, the basic rundown of it is that we go, me and a couple other people go every Friday night um, to this, uh, to the Berkshire County House of Corrections. Um, which is in Pittsfield, so about a 30-minute drive, um, more or less, from Williams. Um, and I don't know, it's like a lot of fun. We like usually will read some poetry in the beginning. There are usually, um, I don't know, between 10 and 15 uh, inmates who will typically show up for our meetings. Um, we read some poetry. Um, often a lot of the inmates will have like uh, pieces that they've written that they want to share with us. Um, and then we also have like generous funding from the school and, and donated books, um, that we get to read. Um, and so I find that's like, for me, been a really great way to interact with the communities outside of Williams. Um, and, uh, and also it's just, I think, um, been a really new and fresh experience for me that I've really appreciated. And I, I also love, uh, English and reading and stuff. So I'm an English major. I think I forgot to mention that, but yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, and then actually the next question has to do with advising and choosing your courses and Deja, you know, having been at Williams for several years now, um, do you want to talk about maybe what the advising system was like from when you started on campus and then maybe how difficult or how easy it was to get into the classes that you wanted? Yeah, totally. So um, I'm kind of like a rarity among my friend group in the sense that I came into Williams and like I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was like, women's gender sexuality studies, like that's it. Like I know that's my path. I know exactly that like the direction I want to be heading in. So thankfully coming in, I like already had an idea of like the classes required and like the classes, like all the courses required to complete the major. Um, and additionally, my advising experience was a little different just because I am on the softball team and the team is paired with a specific advisor, um, just like coming in to help ease transition so that he's like more familiar with like us and like our culture which like sounds kind of like strange but it's uh really not and he's really great but he um is a biology professor and so initially coming in i was like yeah i'm not a big fan of the hard sciences you know like i took my ap calcs and chems when needed but like I really know what I want to do. And he definitely tried to persuade me a little to just like keep my options open, but not did that definitely did not try to dissuade me and in my interests at all. And he was like, if you already know what you want to do, like that's awesome. That's great. I would suggest, you know, try a poli sci class here, try a sociology class, try something um, that are sim like similar to your interests, but a little outside of the field. Um, and then I was just like, okay, noted. And then just like still took my widgets classes. I took some poli size here and there, um, but really stayed on a pretty narrow path. I picked up the Africana concentration pretty soon after I started taking classes and realized this is also something that I'm very interested in. And then um, the really great thing about Williams is that you don't have to declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. So it allows for plenty of room for um, self exploration and maybe a little bit of doubt here and there. Um, but so then I basically was just on track. I came 
came in to my advisor and I was like, here's all the classes that I've taken. And um, with my study abroad, abroad credits, like I'm pretty much done with my major actually, but I really want to be a widget major. And they were like, awesome. And so fortunately, unfortunately, my path was a little bit more narrow than some of my peers. But um, other than that, I really rely on my advisors now. You get to choose your advisor. Um, once you've declared, you get to declare, choose a major that's specific to your interests. And um, yeah, they're great. I actually just had a Zoom coffee meet with them a couple days ago, so yeah. Yeah, and something I'll actually say too is that if you decide to, for example, have two majors, you will have an advisor um, in both of those majors once you declare after the um, at the end of your sophomore year. So I mentioned I was a biology and psychology double major. So I had an, a, a professor who was my advisor from the biology department and someone who was my advisor in the psychology department. And because I was a pre-med student, I also had an advisor in the career center um, who helped me choose my classes over the four years at Williams that would make he, that would make me a competitive applicant to medical school and someone who helped me choose the clinical experiences that again would boost my application uh, and my acceptance rate later on when I applied to medical school. Um, but thank you Deja for laying that out for us. And Nick, um, do you actually, for choosing your classes, do you wanna talk about the divisional requirements and how maybe those help you choose your courses when you first started and now as a sophomore before you finish declaring your major? Yeah, um, so one thing I will say is every time we have like a uh, sort of class selection or like, um, what is it, class registration come around, I sort of have a mini crisis because I always have like a list of like 20 different classes that I want to take and I always have a really tough time picking between them. Um, so I guess in that way, like having divisional requirements helps to make things a bit easier. Um, the way the divisional requirements work pretty basically is uh, there are three divisions, division one, division two, and division three classes. Um, division one is like uh, English, humanities, and the arts. Um, division two, I think, is social sciences, um, so um, like economics and poli sci and things like that. And division three is usually like hard sciences, so math, well, or math, hard sciences and math, so math, um, biology, chemistry, etc. Um, and so uh, the requirements are are pretty, I think, relaxed in comparison to a lot of other schools. Um, you only have to take uh, three of each division by the time you graduate. Um, and so for me, that's been great because it's allowed me to, um, I mean, I'm taking like three English classes right now, which is something I'm really excited about, but it also allows me to, um, to take classes in other subject matters that I am, am kind of interested in, but may, may not have um, sort of gravitated towards on my own. Um, and so for me, that's been really great. Um, and I think also there are a lot of, you know, resources at Williams that help you sort of like, like, like your advisor, um, to pick the best classes or the classes that would be best for you. Um, and uh, overall, there's a lot of freedom, I think, in picking your, your course um, schedule. So it's, you can really sort of design your own education, which is, I found to be pretty amazing. Great, thank you. Um, and I do have a more specific question for Deja. Um, now that you've studied abroad, um, th there's actually a question as to where you went. And actually, it would be really helpful if you talked a little bit more about studying abroad from Williams um, a little bit more broadly and how you chose that particular program and what resources were there to help you with that. Right, great. Um, so study abroad at Williams is sort of a unique but also like magical sort of thing um, in that most juniors tend to go abroad. It's very much supported by the college um, and the requirements like the divisional requirements like Nick was talking about are flexible to allow you that room to be able to go and explore the world if you want. Um, and so in doing so you just have to like attend like you have to attend like a couple study abroad like seminars and you have to like submit like an application and it's sort of a process like within the college and then you have to apply to the program itself. Um, and so sort of again, like my major, I was just like, oh, online, you know, doing some research about like the programs Williams offered. And there was a women's gender and sexuality studies program in Europe. And I was like, well, hello, um, have to do that one. Um, and so the program was, was very unique, um, very exhilarating definitely a little tiring. It was only a 90 day program, um, but we visited four countries, uh, like four countries on the syllabus and six cities like within those four countries. Um, and wow, <laughs> what an experience, honestly, um, that you like, it was really, I really liked the program 
for one reason in particular because there was a really nice blend of staying in like a commercial apartments but also like homestays um one of the the only critiques i really have of the program is that um, i actually wasn't required to learn the language um, or any other language besides english which you know is like could be positive if you like the way you look at it but at, at times i did feel a little privileged like going to these places and being like hi like i only speak english and i need you to speak english to me um but in saying so, the program traveled to um, Amsterdam and Utrecht in the Netherlands, uh, Berlin, Germany, Krakow, Poland, and then Opava, Olomots, and Czech Republic, Opava, Olomots, and Prague, all in the Czech Republic. Um, and it was an amazing experience. It was sort of like experimental learning style slash experiential learning style um, in which the first week I actually attended a master's program for a week in gender studies, which was amazing. It was the best gender studies program in the world. Um, there we had lots of visits uh, from like really esteemed European feminist scholars come and speak to us. Um, we had visits, we had tours. Um, so it was quite amazing, only packed one suitcase, which was probably the greatest struggle of all. But um, I have lots of friends who did programs like sort of similar to this or programs that were just like based in, in one specific location and then their programs did allow them to travel. So I actually had a teammate who, she was located in Prague, but somehow would end up in the same place that I was at the same time, which was quite fun. Um, but on, and then my, the credits from the trip, I was able to, um, I guess, sort of petition to the widgets department and say like, hey, look, I'm going on this widgets program and here's all of the classes that I'm taking and here are my grades, even though um, study away, your grades are actually pass fail in, in terms of Williams standards. But I was able to petition with my advisor and say, hey, look, here's all the widgets classes I took. Here are actually the grades I got in them. And then I was able to receive credit towards my major, which was huge. Great, thank you. And um, I do have a couple of questions actually about setting a way um, through the two programs that Williams offers. One is the Williams Exeter program at Oxford and the other one is the Mystic program here in the US. Um, and I'd love it if um, Nick, you could actually share a little bit more about both. Um, and especially if you could expand on Oxford because that was one of the questions that was asked. Sure, yeah. Um, I'm actually pretty familiar with Oxford, although I didn't apply just because I have a bunch of friends who applied to Oxford. It's a pretty competitive program, but a lot of them have gotten in. Um, so it's a little bit sad because it's a full year program. Um, so all of your junior year. Um, so I'll be sad that, you know, I won't get to see them, but I think they're super, super excited. Um, so a bit about the Williams program or uh, the Oxford program. I think it's called the Williams program, something with Exeter in the name too. Williams Exeter program at Oxford. Or oh. we both for short. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's like a full year program in, um, in England and, uh, something that's really special about it is a lot of, all the classes are, um, tutorial style. Um, and so, um, this is something that's also very unique to Williams, but the tutorial is basically a class with, um, two students and a professor. Um, and so students, um, typically, you know, every other week will sort of like, uh, write an essay about a, about a certain topic and then have like a very close um, discussion with their professor and with the other student. Um, and so I think this is a big, a big draw for Oxford is you have these very sort of tight knit um, classes um, that I know a lot of my friends were really attracted to. Um, and also like, you know, really, really uh, well-renowned um, professors there that can like teach um, from, you know, a huge, huge range of things. Um, and basically you just live with, you know, a couple, I think 30 or 40 other Williams students um, in Oxford and take classes with Oxford professors um, for the course of one year. So it's a really amazing experience. Um, and I can speak a little bit about Williams Mystic too. Um, I'm pretty sure Williams, I think Williams Mystic is a program you can take as a sophomore actually. I know one, um, one of my friends did it. Um, and basically, uh, you um so you're not at williams obviously but you take classes um uh aboard this i don't even i don't even quite know how to describe it but it's like um it's very it has a lot to do with sort of nautical studies and so i think a lot of the classes are held aboard um like boats and ships um and it's also very closely tied to uh environmental studies um and so um students that go there get to learn a lot about the environment while also like, you know, literally living on a boat um, for a couple months. Um, and it's, I've, I've heard it's a really amazing experience. <clears throat> Great, thank you. And actually one of the huge perks about studying away um, at 
from Williams to other institutions or to other countries is that your financial aid is portable. So if you receive financial aid at Williams, um, regardless of what program you end up choosing, uh, that financial aid will travel with you wherever you go. Um, and actually, um, Nick, you talked a little bit about the tutorial system um, at Oxford and how we adopted it from, from them essentially. Um, and Deja, I know that you've talked about taking tutorials and I would love to hear a little bit more about what that experience was like for you um, and essentially what you loved uh, about the class. Yeah, I'm like, yes, tutorial question. Um, so I am personally a huge fan of the tutorial style model. Um, so this one tutorial that I took in particular, I took it um, my sophomore spring. Um, and for like a little bit of context of how I got there, um, I was initially enrolled in the fall of my sophomore year um, in this like really challenging class to get into. This like has like a high waiting list. And so I was able to sneak my way in. Um, it was like black feminism and womanism and with this one professor. And you know, it was kind of a bigger class, but you know, she like kind of noticed me and then actually invited me to um, a winter study. So we're like, we were in fall, but then she invited me to a winter study program um, in the West Coast of Florida, of which was exploring uh, black religion in um, southern communities and so we actually stayed in a beach house on an island with like 15 students and it was quite magical um, and then from there because I had developed a pretty close relationship with her at this point I then decided to take a tutorial with her um, in which the class was um, actually it was sort of it was an English and religious class um, and it was focusing on the works of the black scientific fiction writer Octavia Butler and so it was sort of interesting in, in that respect that it was only novels from one author but each week so this the style of the tutorial goes it's you and a partner and your professor and um, I also really like the, the one thing I really like about the tutorial is you can decide your own schedule um, based around like your partner and your professor's allotted time and so how essentially it goes is you say like re, like or at least my style was you would read half the the book each week and there was one person who was tasked with drafting a paper responding to that so then say it was my week so i would be like the main response person um i would have about almost a week to, to write the paper to read the book and then um, 24 hours before the tutorial, I would pass my paper along to my partner who would then read my paper and then provide a response to my response paper, um, just like some, some comments, feedbacks, critiques. And then that way, by the time that class uh, began, that we would go in and we would have sort of like a summary. We were on the same page. We would have all read my response and my partner's response paper. And then that way we could really get down to the nitty gritty of it. And honestly, I really prefer that style because it may seem like a lot of work, but you're coming in with already, already a really established uh, basis of knowledge and, and understanding of what you're about to be talking about. Um, and then from there, we would sort of just you know, bounce ideas off each other, talk about it. Sometimes it would turn into like a grand like discussion about life in general and like happiness and well-being. There were some tears shed on my behalf in, in one meeting, I will admit to it. Um, and then from there, I actually was then enrolled in independent study with that same professor, which again was, was with one other student and that it had the same uh, model as the tutorial. Um, but I love them. <laughs> And I know there was a question actually about um, opinions on taking tutorials during your first year at Williams. And um, just know that tutorials are not required whatsoever if you become a Williams student, they are completely optional. Um, though we really highly encourage all of our students to take tutorials starting their first year on campus, even starting your first semester. And um, we do have tutorials specifically designed for first year students. Um, and the tutorials that are 100 level specifically for first year students, they tend to be a little less intense than a typical um, 200 and above uh, tutorial would be. And that's because we want students to um, get used to the format of the tutorial, to um, get used to providing feedback and to receiving that critique. And that's something that's gonna make you a much better student later on. Um, we know that it sounds incredibly intimidating to a lot of students who haven't had experiences with this style of class, um, but this is something that, again, will help you not only during your time at Williams, but beyond because our professors really do model these classes after graduate level uh, classes as well. And that, again, we want to make sure that you have a civil conversation and that you know how to have discourse with someone that you don't always agree with uh, about certain topics um, and to be able to hear from different perspectives. Um, so we do highly encourage students to take them the first year, um, but again, they're not a requirement whatsoever. And the other thing I'll say is that professors do try to pair you with someone who has a similar academic 
um, preparation as you coming in um, and they'll try to pick someone who maybe has a different um, academic background as well in that maybe if you are a widgets um, major and taking a widgets tutorial they might try to pair you with someone who's taken other history classes or political science classes because they want you to uh, essentially discuss the topic from different perspectives and to think outside of the box um, so that's why tutorials are really really beneficial um, and I do want to switch gears um, from talking about academics real quick um, to talk about residential life at Williams um, specifically about the entry system during your first year and then what does housing actually look like afterwards. Um, so actually Nick, since uh, you're a sophomore now, you uh, have a, you might remember better what it was like to be a first year student at Williams. So do you want to talk about what the entry is and maybe um, just what your experience was like and then Deja will ask you to talk about what housing options are like after your first year. Um. This has definitely been, by the way, just on my mind a lot because, uh, well, I can sort of explain, but the entry system um, is created sort of in tandem with the JA system. Um, and JAs are junior advisors who are basically um, there to juniors who like live with the frosh and um, hang out with them and uh, help them and can give them advice on various things. Um, sort of like an RA, but with, you know, no power and just sort of like only there to help out um, and so I'm really excited to be a JA next year so I've been having a lot of these conversations with people um, but basically the way the entry system is works is there are I think 14 different entries we have two uh, freshman dorms mission and frost quad um, and uh, the entry is composed of about 40 uh, ish people um, with about four JAs so it's 40 different freshmen and then four juniors that are all living with them um, the reason that Williams sort of organizes entries like this is to, um, try to have a large enough group that people can find friends within their entries, but also that it's, um, small enough that, uh, the entry feels like a home. Um, I know in my experience, I was in an entry called MD3 last year, um, best entry ever, <laughs> um, but, uh, I had three really wonderful JAs who right off the bat, like the very first day that I moved in, you know, showed up at my door with like signs and candy, um, or like signs that said like welcome and stuff. Um, and so I felt really welcomed into the community. And then I found a lot of, uh, over the course of the year, I've made a lot of different friends in my entry, um, some of whom are still like my closest friends. Um, and so I think just the way that the, the school sets up, um, the entry is, was really effective um, for providing support for students um, who are transitioning to college um, and um, also just like giving them a nice place to live. Um, yeah, and one thing to add to that. So the um, entries in Frosh Quad um, are all vertical um, and yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I said it and it suddenly sounded so wrong. Our vertical, um, so there's two different sides of Frosh Quads. There's Williams or Willie and Sage, and then they're categorized by houses. Um, and then the, there's corresponding entries to that. So like there would be like, uh, you know, Willie E, F, and that would be the buildings Williams E and Williams F, and then all of the floors between them. Whereas Mission, um, the entries are horizontal and they actually remodeled the entry system after my year. So I was done it for Nick, but um, uh, they're on uh, horizontal planes. And then that way you can sort of mingle with the people um, on your floor. And another thing is we are both mission kids that you can tell like by the name of the entry. Um, and I do recommend mission to those who I'm just gonna recommend it to everyone because for one, there's a dining hall in the building, which is so nice in the dead of winter, you will soon learn. And if you don't learn, you'll look back and be like, wow, I wish I used Mission more, like I do. Um, but so after I lived in Mission my freshman year, and then after um, there were pretty much anywhere on campus I wanted to live, I could, that being except for off campus, which are typically like apartments um, on the top of like restaurants or um, shops on Spring Street. But again, if you've been to Williams, off campus is very much not off campus. Um, and actually 97% of students live um, in dorms on campus. Um, and so following my freshman year, I then uh, moved into West, um, which is the was originally Williams College. It's the oldest um, dorm building on campus, which 
oldest, yeah, but also the most centrally located, which was definitely what I was thinking when I moved in there. And um, I, West is actually um, technically considered upperclassmen housing or like senior housing, um, but I fortunately had like the upper hand in the selection process, both my sophomore year and my junior year when I lived in Perry House, um, because there's these things called pick groups. And so there's like a lottery, like a virtual lottery that will go on um, for people who want to apply to live in these upperclassmen housings or non first year housings. Um, and if you're in a pick group or a group of six individuals with someone who is the housing coordinator or like the neighborhood coordinator of the area, um, you then actually have like a separate selecting process, which you sort of get the upper hand. Um, so I recommend either becoming a housing coordinator, it's also a paid position, um, or being friends with the housing coordinator like I was. Um, so yeah, my, my sophomore year, I lived in West. Um, and then this past year, I lived in Perry House, um, which is a little further off, off campus, if you will, not really, um, and um, is actually uh, one of the remodeled uh, fraternity houses. Um, as some of you may know, Williams abolished fraternities and sororities in the 60s um, and actually made a really great use of space in remodeling these old um, frat houses into new um, dorm buildings. So, yeah. And I know, Nick, you Sorry. go ahead. Just yeah. one thing I wanted to add quickly was um, I think also something that's really cool that Williams does is just the way that they use their space in terms of both having private rooms that people, you know, everyone, uh, most, most upperclassmen can get a, a single if they want, but also uh, modeling public space. And so I know in entries and in a lot of other places, there are common rooms where it's a really great way to, or at least I found a really great way to hang out with other people um, and just, you know, spend time either doing homework, you know, watching movies or just hanging out. I know Sorry to interrupt. To be, but no, no, it's okay. I was going to say, I'm, I know that I'm not supposed to be biased and I hope my supervisors don't see this part of the video, but I was also a first year student at Mission. I was actually in the Mills Dennett side and then I was a JA in, Mills, in Dennett 3, actually. So I am a Mission kid through and through. I think both of them have really positive aspects to them, but of course I will always say that Mission is better. <laughs> um, and actually how the process works in getting picked into an entry, um, when you enroll at Williams over the summer, you're gonna be receiving even more emails than you probably are now, um, talking about what to uh, expect for orientation and about your entry, for example. Um, and you can have preferences if you want to live in Fresh Quad or if you want to live in Mission. Um, you can have a preference if you want to have a roommate or not. Um, and all of those are taken into consideration. Um, but the Office of Student Life essentially um, creates the entries very thoughtfully and in, in the way that we want them to be a microcosm of the entire campus body. Um, and that's again very intentional because we want you to meet people who are very different from you and we want you to again see things from different perspectives. Um, and meet people that you wouldn't have otherwise met. Um, people from all different backgrounds, coming from very different places, who have many different identities. Um, so that's just very thoughtfully created. And again, your preferences are taken into consideration, uh, but it's okay if you don't get your preference. I, for example, before I knew better, I said I wanted to live in Frosh Quad. Uh, thankfully, I got Mission, <laughs> and now I know that Mission is obviously the best. Um, but just know that um, you will have an opportunity to give your preferences. And at Williams, um, your first year and afterwards, you will have um, no more than a roommate. So even if you have a roommate, you will never have more than two people living in your room. Uh, you will never have a triplet or anything like that. You will share common spaces with everyone else, um, like Nick and Deja said, but um, just in your room, it'll be you and your other person um, if you do have a roommate. Um, and I do want to um, actually switch gears then to talk about uh, pre-professional advising um, for the next section, especially because I get a few questions about being pre-med at Williams. <laughs> um, and then I'll also talk more broadly about, again, pre-professional advising in general. Um, but from the time that you get to campus, um, if you think you want to be a pre-med student, we want to apply to medical school after Williams, or if you want to pursue engineering, graduate school, law school, um, just graduate school in general, um, there are going to be different advisors in the 68 Center for Career Exploration who will help you lay out a plan. Um, and so during orientation, you'll essentially, for the pre-med aspect in, uh, specifically, you will meet with the pre-health professions advisor. Her name's Rebecca at the moment. Um, she's wonderful. And essentially, she will help you lay out a plan um, for the four-year classes that you might take at Williams. Um, and that's actually something that you can find on our website. If you look up pre-health professions, um, Williams College, it should pop up pretty easily. 
Um, it, they will essentially tell you you have to take a year of biology, uh, two years of chemistry, a year of physics, your math, etc. Um, so that you can start thinking about what your four years at Williams might look like um, taking those classes into consideration. They will also lay out different internship and clinical experiences. Um, and so for this, um, it might look very different at Williams because uh, you might think that you might want to shadow a doctor during the regular semester. Um, but at Williams, it's actually, we love to think about it as uh, quality over quantity in general. Most of our students do their clinical experiences over a winter study term or over the summer. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that because you will absolutely get all the clinical experience that you need um, and the research experience. Um, for example, we have a class over a winter study term, which is the class that you take in the month of January for three and a half weeks. Um, for two of my winter studies, I actually shadowed physicians. My sophomore year, I shadowed an emergency medicine physician um, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm originally from New Mexico. And so I went back home um, and this is someone that I met through um, a close family friend. And my class was essentially, essentially to follow them around, learn from them, ask questions. And by the end of the class, I had to write a five page reflection on what I learned from the experience. Um, my junior year, I shadowed a pathologist who was a Williams alumna um, here in Bennington, Vermont, which is about 20 minutes from here. And that was really great because I got to connect with her about how much Williams has changed over time. She told me about her medical school experience and about what jobs look like afterwards and how to apply to medical school in general, um, which was really helpful because then she helped write me a letter of recommendation for when I applied to medical school. Um, and then I, um, over the summers, for example, Williams uh, financial aid is really extraordinary in many ways. Um, one of the ways in which is extraordinary is that over the summers, we really believe that students should be getting the experiences that they need and that they will find valuable, um, even if they are unfunded. For example, I wanted to shadow a doctor. That wasn't going to pay me at all. Um, so instead of getting a job, I requested to have a grant through the alumni sponsored internship program. Um, which is something that you can get through the Career Center. And I got $3,800 just to shadow a doctor. Um, I shadowed a family medicine physician, and that was great because I got to see that family medicine was something that really interested me. Um, and so, again, those three different experiences, when I was doing my medical uh, school interviews, I got a lot of questions as to how I was able to get all these experiences because so many of the applicants that they saw were sort of lacking these experiences. And this is just something that was really easy to do through Williams. It was part of the curriculum, something that was highly encouraged. Um, and in terms of research, that's also important for when you apply to graduate school in general. I um, mean, at Williams, our seven to one uh, student to faculty ratio and the small class sizes really give you access to our faculty um, who are just as devoted to teaching you as they are to doing cutting edge research. And our faculty love having students doing research with them. Um, and because at Williams, we only really have undergraduate students um, that they are primary focus. Um, and so our professors look to those undergraduate students to be doing the cutting edge research. Um, and that's something that will certainly beef up your, your resume in many ways and something that graduate schools will find very appealing. Um, and so that's essentially what the pre-med process looks like. And it's very similar for other graduate school programs that you're thinking about and that you will have an advisor, you will have a lot of mentoring, not just from them, but from the professors and learning from your other students as well. Um, and so that, that's basically what it looks like, but do let me know if you have other questions about it as well. Um, yeah, Deja? Not a question, just something to add. Um, I had a friend, the housing coordinator who I mentioned um, before, who last summer um, shadowed a dermatologist at Stanford um, and then was again uh, applied for the ASAP grant, was able to receive funding, um, but also didn't really have a, a place to stay. Um, so she actually ended up staying in the guest house of one of the trustees on the board of trustees um, who happened to have like this extravagant um, guest house available to her. And so she was able to live there that's, uh, this past summer, um, totally free of charge, um, which I get things just again shows how much the Williams community cares and really um, just is actually looking for ways to um, help their students. Yeah, certainly. And um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, uh, I talked very briefly about winter study and how I was able to shadow doctors through that, but I do want to talk a little bit more about winter study broadly because we do have some questions about that. Um, and so winter study is something that every student on campus is mandated to have. Your first year you are required to stay on campus. 
um, but afterwards you can take advantage of other opportunities. So I'd actually love to hear more from um, both you, Nick and Deja, about your winter study opportunities and maybe your travel opportunities if you've had any. Um, so Deja, actually, do you want to kick us off with that? Yeah, totally. Um, I'll actually begin by talking about my freshman year um, winter study. And one of the really um, amazing things about winter study is that there's a lot of time on your hands. It, amazing, depending on how you look at it. Um, but there was a lot of, I found that there was a lot of time on my hands. And William has this amazing program called Free University, um, which it has um, students who are very interested or passionate about a subject um, are able to create their own course and instruct it free for fellow students at Williams. And there's a whole ca course catalog and then people can, you know, reach out and, and email you. So um, as a very bushy eyed, <laughs> bright eyed and bushy tailed freshman, um, I decided I was going to teach a course. Um, and so I actually taught um, stained glass making my freshman year um, and was able to apply applied to for funding through College Council and is approved for funding. Um, and if any of you are unfamiliar with the stained glass process, it's a very tedious process, very expensive. But for some reason, College Council was like, yes, of course, like, awesome. Here's some money, get some things, host a class, of course. So um, I actually was able to conduct my own stained glass making course alongside of the other course that I was taking um, for winter study. And found it to just be a really personally rewarding um, and fulfilling experience. And then um, my sophomore year, um, as I mentioned before, I was able to go on a travel program. Um, we traveled to the west coast of Florida, um, again, exploring um, the black religions of the southern community, community there. Um, and Okay. <laughs> kind of hard to describe, honestly. We were staying in like this wonderful beach house. Um, literally, like the beach was at the end of the street. Um, and so we had classes um, about like a couple times a week. Um, and like in that time that we didn't have like formal classes, we were doing like guest sites and we had lecturers and we had visits at, at various centers. Um, and we actually worked really closely with the community that my professor um, was brought up in that had suffered um, some pretty serious environmental injustices. So we worked very closely with them and their local church, um, just like providing solutions and helping to care for the com community the best that we could. Um, but again, that was quite a magnificent experience. And again, I'm, I'm on financial aid and the entire thing was pretty much covered, which um, I found to be just quite amazing that I was on a beach in the middle of January, you know, doing my, my course readings, um, which was sponsored um, by the program or by the school and like the program itself. So that was that was awesome. I, I can't say I've done anything as cool as stained glass or going to Florida, um, but uh, I really have enjoyed the two winter study classes that I took. Um, freshman year, I took this class called uh, Shanghai Cuisine, um, which was so amazing. It was like we met twice a week, um, every morning. Uh, so, I mean, most of the class was cooking, but then also a large part of it was eating. But, um, and so every class, um, the teacher would uh, usually cook something for us. So I remember the first day we got there, she had prepared like um, 100, you know, dumplings for the entire class. Um, and we spent the first, you know, half of the class, like, you know, greedily like slurping up these soup dumplings. And then the second half of the class, like learning how to cook them. Um, and it was just like, a, I don't know, it was a really fun class. Um, definitely, as you can see, it like wasn't super academic, um, but that definitely allowed me, I think it, it also, it was academic in a sense because I, um, I was taking Chinese that semester and so I got to practice my Chinese, um, but also uh, was a really great way to sort of um, relax from the class, from the, you know, kind of sort of busy fall schedule and busy spring semester that was upcoming. Um, and by the end of that, you know, uh, I think we cooked like 10 or 12 different, you know, types of food and um, compiled this recipe book, which I still like make uh, food out of, you know, like once a week or something. Um, the recipes are super simple and super delicious. Um, so that was what I did freshman year. Um, sophomore year, I did a class called uh, Learning Intervention for Teens. Um, and so I think I mentioned earlier that I uh, do work with the Berkshire uh, uh, House of Corrections. And so this program was working with um, youth in like the Berkshire uh, juvenile court system. Um, and so I was paired with this student from Pittsfield who was like uh, really into SoundCloud rap. And so we like worked together on like making a SoundCloud rap. Um, 
it was really cool. He was like so impressed. The library has like a couple of different recording studios. And so we would usually go to um, like the library's recording studio in the afternoon and like um, record music, which was like super, super fun for him. Um, and I didn't do any stained glass, but I did do one for university, which was knitting. Um, they have like tons of like sort of different uh, free universities that you can, can take that, you know, um, students that are self-taught by students. Um, and so I never knew how to knit, but now I love knitting. So I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, and you can also, you know, sign up for various other activities. There's, I think, uh, skiing, if you, if you, you know, um, want to hit the slopes, um, and snowshoeing and other sort of hiking things. Um, lots of things to do both, you know, outdoors and indoors. Um, and winter study for me always is just like my favorite time of the entire semester um, or the entire school year, just because I can spend so much time with my friends. Um, and also have, you know, a lot of time to myself to like work on my own or, you know, do my own hobbies, um, and things that I'm interested in. So. I happened to be in the Q and A section and I saw a question about, um, PE credits and winter study is also a really great opportunity to take a PE class. And so the PE requirements, there's four required, I guess, like credits um, needed to complete uh, your PE requirement um, and like a varsity or a competitive sport at Williams will make up three of those. And so I had three of the four because as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm part of the Williams softball team. And so the winter study um, month long period will count um, for one credit instead of the two that like a semester long program uh, would give you. So last winter study, um, I took a ballet class, um, which, was challenging, but was wonderful. And oftentimes I walk by a mirror and practice a couple of plies um, and found that the class was a very welcoming environment. There were plenty of people of across all different walks of life, a lot of like male athletes in there, which I was like really about, we were just like really into it. And we all had our ballet shoes and leotards. Um, so I think that winter study is a really great opportunity to also like explore and reach out to the community. But then also if you need to get a, a one PE credit out of the way, for example, winter study is a great time to do that. Yeah, and a uh, winter study is definitely a time that we like to call it being academic with a twist. I think for all the reasons that you all mentioned and that we think that students do learn in many non-mainstream ways. Um, and so glass blowing and taking bowling, if you want to do it for PE, for example, and uh, those are different, you're going to be learning about uh, different issues in different ways. Um, so that's why we make it mandatory for everyone. Um, and I do have a question about, um, you know, obviously over winter study, it's a lot more relaxed because it's one class the students are taking versus four over the regular semester. Um, so there are some questions about the workload and maybe how rigorous it is um, and how you balance that with other commitments. Um, so I'd love to hear from you both and Nick, um, if you can get us started, that'd be great. Um, so yeah, I definitely will. I definitely agree that there, you know, is a significant amount of work at Williams, but I think one thing that's um, made it a lot more manageable for me is just um, the fact that you sort of have the ability to take classes that you like and that you're interested in. Um, you like basically set your own schedule. Um, and so um, even like now, for example, like, you know, all of our classes have switched to pass fail and almost you know, all the classes are being done remotely. So for a lot of my English classes, um, I have been, you know, re reading the course materials and then having some sort of meeting online. Um, but I found actually like now more than ever, now that I have, I have more time, I am, uh, really spending a lot more time doing or a lot of time doing my readings, um, and have really appreciated, um, I don't know, the opportunity to have lots of time to do my readings just cause it's such interesting stuff. Um, at Williams, I would say in terms of balancing things, uh, it definitely is, uh, I think a, a little bit of a transition at first, just figuring out how much time you're spending on certain things and even just figuring out how you're going to partition your day in terms of um, when, what times of the day you work best. Um, uh, but I think something that Williams also has, does a really good job of is providing a lot of resources to students. Um, and so, for example, um, there's like a, a math, the math science research set, resource center, um, which students can use if they need help on PSETs or studying for um, exams. Um, and there's also like a writing workshop. So if you ever need help with essays, um, and I've also just found like from interacting with my peers and my professors that um, my friends are almost, you know, always happy to like look at my, um, my essays or, you know, things like that, uh, to give me feedback on it. And my professors are also very likewise happy to, 
um, give me advice. Um, and so I think the work is, there's definitely a lot of work, but it's also really manageable um, and you can always ask for help. Um, and that's really highly encouraged. Yeah, I think similarly, um, because everyone has a lot of work, the culture or the, the Williams work culture um, is one that supports others doing their work and getting their work done on time. Um, and you'll find that most of us are actually like in a library on a Saturday night or like like getting like it's nerd build, but kicked out of the library for being there um, on like Friday or Saturday or definitely Sunday nights. Um, my experience, um, because I'm a division two major, I don't really have um, problem sets or, or tests. I mo mostly have like essays and um, a lot of my classes are discussion based. So like Nick was saying, we have readings that like are expected to be done before the class. And then you go into the class period with everyone having read the, the same information and then a discussion can sort of uh, follow suit. Um, but most definitely in my experience, um, your friends are there to help you, your professors are there to help you, your teammates are there to help you, and also to make sure that um, things get done. Oftentimes, I'm like the friend who's like, can we take a break? Like, can we just like have a snack or something? My friends are like, Nisha, like you gotta get done a page and then we can have like a dance break. And so like, it's about like finding, also I definitely recommend like finding a space on campus that's like your workspace. Um, Tunnel City is very much mine. You'll find me there all finals with like my hood on, furiously typing. Um, another thing is Google Calendar or calendars in general are your best friend. Um, having just like a calendar because you'll receive a lot of invites for things so if you don't have it it makes things kind of a little bit more challenging but of just having like a weekly calendar and being able to put your classes in even be able to block off study times okay this time needs to be allotted to doing this paper I found has really made the work even more manageable great and then um, just being mindful of time we just have time for one more question um, and I'd love to hear from you both, knowing that you came from rather larger places, uh, especially than Williams, um, how the, what the transition was like for you, and then maybe something unexpected that you found um, when you got here, um, that'd be great. And then Nick, if you want to kick us off with that. Um, so yeah, definitely for me, the transition was uh, um, definitely a bit at first, just because um, coming from, I, I'm on the Upper West Side uh, of Manhattan in New York City, so a very sort of urban area, um, to like Williams, which is super rural, um, was definitely a bit of a shock at first, I think. Um, but one thing that I think definitely helped to ease that was just like the amount of support that I felt like I received from my entry mates, so the other people, in, the other students in my entry, um, and uh, my professors and classmates. Um, and I also found that there was a lot of there are a lot of or there are a lot of things that really keep you busy um, and occupied and happy in your time at Williams. Um, uh, so the work I was doing, the extracurriculars I was involved in, um, and spending time with friends, you know, um, getting meals and stuff, uh, definitely, um, definitely. I think I the, the transition was sort of eased by that. Um, something unexpected. Hmm. Let me think. Daisha, do you want to go in the meantime and I'll, I'll brainstorm for something unexpected? Yes, um, coming from Florida, uh, Williamstown and Williams is not flat. Um, lots of beautiful rolling hills, very elaborate, gorgeous scenery. And that was one thing I was definitely struck by. Like Nick mentioned, it can definitely be a challenge, but there's a lot of resources to help get you off campus if you need so, being like Zipcar or the Williams Transport, which will take you to, um, you know, Albany Airport or Pittsfield or North Adams. I um, mean, you just have to schedule that on the website. Um, but yeah, I think the one thing that was most unexpected is how much I would miss it. Initially when getting there, I was like, oh, it's it's so stuffy and I'm, I'm a city girl. But then immediately going home for breaks, I could only think about returning back to campus, so. And then just very quickly, I guess the unexpected thing for me would, um, would probably be, I mean, it might sound a little bit corny, but just how beautiful Williams is. I think coming from the city, I was like, you know, I love the skyscrapers, but the, oh my gosh, when, when there's sunset at Williams is the most gorgeous thing ever, right in front of uh, Sawyer. Yes, right there. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. And I know we didn't get to all of your questions and thank you so much for submitting so many great questions. Um, we were more than happy to answer them. Um, and there are so many great resources on our website. You can definitely find our information, 
um, for admission officers specifically or for some current students that would be more than happy to uh, connect with you. And there's a, a section called Ask an EF. So please find different students' profiles and connect with someone. They know that they should be hearing from you all. Um, and then we will um, update you as soon as we know what the fall is going to look like. Um, right now we're planning to have a standard semester, but um, with everything that's developing, we are not sure, but are still planning uh, other contingency plans. Um, so keep, uh, stay tuned. Um, but thank you again so much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed um, the session um, and hope you enjoy the rest of the night um, and stay safe and healthy and see you later. Thanks again. Bye.